In Affinity Photo, you can create all kinds of designs with text brushes. This is some text that I created earlier. I will show you how to create similar sort of designs and it can be added as a brush. You need the brushes panel. So here's the brushes panel. And the brushes can be applied in thousands of different ways. So with this design, you can use it in countless different designs as well. So brushes, so that's in the window menu. Go to right side and go down here and new brush with selection. Needs to be a pixel layer. You need to convert it into a pixel layer before you can do anything. So this design could be like blurred, it could be reds, greens, blues, it could be different font sizes, different everything, different angles. It's actually horizontal at the moment. Now you could of course create it vertically as well, maybe a diagonal, it's another option as well. So new brush from selection. Now it's been added. You can see here, it's in the brushes panel. So double click, any point you want to change your brush, double click it. And you can see then you get this panel. Now I'm going to just quickly delete this text. I don't need the text anymore. So just delete it. And now create a layer. You always need a layer. So got a layer there, you can see there, pixel layer. And image brush 11, double click, brings up panel to edit the brush. And at the moment, you can see you've got this long line. Now the brush was created horizontally. You might not want it that. You might decide, you know what? Actually, I wanted it to be upright. And I want it upright. So it was a mistake that I created it horizontally. Well, you can correct that. In general, just go here to rotation. And this is applied, obviously, to all the brush strokes. As it applied, 25%. Just set it to 25% and it will be upright. Obviously, it's probably better to create it upright in the first place, but you can correct that by simply going there. Also, you can modify the spacing. You notice there's gaps between all of them. Now, you might not want that. And what you can do, you can reduce it down. Now, I don't want the text to be obscured, so put it to about like 9%, 10%, so there's not much difference. If you push it all the way to zero, it'll overlap, which is fine, creates some interesting designs as well, but it's not what I want. So I want to see the text. And I can also modify the size. So I'm just going to reduce it down. I'm just going to go for 403 or so as default brush size. And that's what it's going to be used as default. But you can change it, of course, at any point. You can go over to the brush size and modify that. Make sure you've got the brush selected. So just click over here. Here's the brush. And now you can apply it. The great thing about this, you've got the preview, but you can also preview it here as well, which is really useful. So you can just simply apply it or undo. So apply and then control Z or command Z and undo it. So just remove that. Well, you've got other settings here. You've got all these ones, rotations. You've got don't set this. What I really want to do is a bit of variation. And you do that via dynamics. So click dynamics and you've got size jitter. Now I'm going to push it to 100%. And now if I apply it, you can see I've got that. It doesn't change because it's pressure. What I want to use is not pressure. Just want to go here and click. You can use distance. That's a really good one to check out, try it out, create some interesting designs. But really, this one, site click, is a great one. So site click, click that. Now, at this point, you think, well, that's not much use. What's, what's the difference? Let's just go over here, general, just reduce the size down so you can see it. Now you can see what happens. You've got this site click effect. Obviously, when you've got that far, you can't see it because of the preview. It's not. But you can see now you get this site click design. What you can also do is you've got profiles over here. So you can modify this countless ways. So click here, standard profile. You can click there and you can see just change there, click there. And they're fairly basic profiles. But you'll notice you've got these dots and you or points. You can just click here and then you can see you can add a lovely blob in it as you go along. So each time it will change, blob, and then you get that, and then blob, and so on. And you can add another one or another one and so on. You can create all kinds. Now it's not super flexible. I have to say it's, it's, you know, it's fine. You can manipulate it to it, but it's unfortunately you can't resize it. Be great if this profile panel could be resized so you could make it a lot bigger. And then you could of course have fine tune it to create even more unusual designs. But you can do to a reason you can click on various places. Now sometimes you might find you can't do it and you have to drag that down. It's a bit sort of unusual at times, but so you've got that. Well, I'm gonna go with that. And then I can apply my brush. 
again, paintbrush tool. And then you can see now as you apply it, you get a really odd, obviously you can't see the text because I've made it very small, but I just wanted to show you that you get this weird cyclic design in your brush stroke. Also, you can use exactly the same, the cyclic, in other effects as well here. So hue jitter. You can do scatter as well, all of them. But here you can see I've got it as random. That's the default, random hue jitter, so you get reds, greens, blues, etc. Well, what you can also do is you can do exactly the same. Now I've gone for a, obviously a red brush. I created a red design. So the design, if you created a black, you might find that there's gonna be an issue there. So just create something that's colorful to start with to get real. But now you can see what happens. You've got this cyclic in the hue jitter. So you get this lovely effect. So again, you can apply it, you get a sort of rainbow ri you know, ribbon design. Again, obviously using the size jitter, and you can get rid of that. If you don't want it, simply just go up there and put none. And now you can see the colors, the rainbow, as it goes through it. But also what you can do, gain profile. So click here and click here. You can modify this and you can see as you do that, you will end up squeezing, obviously these, the blues and the greens crunched in. You've got the red all the way through for most of it. And then you've squeezed it in there and you can change that, go there and change that go there and so on to create all kinds of unusual. Now you can also select other ones and just change that just to create, again, lots of different zones. And you can do exactly the same with saturation. Again, can be set to cyclic and you can see then you get that effect there. Personally, I keep that down to zero. But hue jitter, I can then apply it and you can see now you get this effect. And again, go back in general, let's just increase the size so you can actually see the text. And you can see as you change that, it will change and you'll get this lovely color effect across there. All kinds of different color effects could be done. Now, of course, you can also add in rotation and much, much more as well. But also you've got other options. You can go here, the textures, you've got brush nozzles. So if you want, you can say you might, you've got this text, you might have like 20 lines or 20 lines of text, you can just save, obviously, line to a file, another line to a file, line to a file, and so on. And then you can use all of that in a brush stroke, which can be added randomly. So add, and I've created one here, brush text one, just a standard PNG file, click open, and now you can see you've got the text interweaving with that. So you've got, obviously, the reds, and you've got that blue, and you can do that cyclic, and you can also change that to cyclic and so on. So there's a lot of options to, and also, again, of course, you've got profile. So at the side, click here, tweak that, and you can see as you do that, changes there. And now I can't actually read the text. It's quite small, to be honest, but you can see the sort of options that are possible with creating multiple texts, different cyclic effects as well added there, or maybe just simply go to random. So you end up with random words, random lines in your text. And it could be just a single word. So you might have, you know, Fred and then blogs, blah, 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 just changing constantly. And also you've got sub brushes as well. And there's many other options. So there's a lot of great features for these brush strokes to create all kinds of designs. And if you want to create, say, like a, a random field design, one of my favorite ways to do it with text, especially if I want something to take, Photoshop, has a lovely fill feature, edit fill feature, and you've got random scripts. Though you can't do everything in Affinity Photo that you can do, but you can do random. You can do random. You can't do the symmetry effects that you can do in Photoshop. But you can do this random effect here. Simply go to Dynamics, and you've got Scatter. And Scatter, Scatter, and also again, Rotation. And you can see as you've got that, all that text, obviously different variety of text. You might have, like say, multiple different lines. You can click close. I can finish this point. And you can see now very quickly by just doing that, you can quickly create a random field design with that text. And it could be any text. It doesn't have to be obviously as straight and uniform as this text here. How to create that text? Well, let's just go back. Very simple. Just go over here, artistic text tool. Click there. And I'm just going to add the word text. Now, obviously, it's white there. Let's just resize that a bit. And I'm just going to change color. So click up here. 
Maybe oh, let's just select that. Ah, maybe change. Now you don't have to have obviously the word text. You could have more text, text and more, whatever. But you can of course vary the colors. So you can simply select this and then maybe change that. So maybe go for red, select that area, ah, maybe go for blue and select that area there of the text and simply go for green and a variety of different options. Now, another option you can always do, which I'd like to do, is go to layers. So in the layers panel, you've got some great features here. Down the bottom, you've got, oops, just move that up there. You've got effects. Just down there, right at the bottom, with that text selected, you can always then click here, and you can go, say, for 3D. Not the world's greatest 3D. I would love to see a proper 3D effect, but unfortunately, that's not available. But you can also go, say, for outer shadow. Just set the radius, offset, and intensity, if you want to add a shadow to it very quickly. Click close. Well, once you've got this, what you can then do is go over here, use the rectangle tool. You could, of course, use other ways of doing this, but I'm just going to do this quickly because I want to create just that. And I'm going to change color. Let's see a color I haven't used, yellow. Now, of course, at the moment, it's on top. So all you need to do is go here to the layers, rectangle, and drag down. So the rectangle is obviously behind. A bit garish, I have to admit, but you've got this text now. I don't want the whole lot. I don't want all this image. But also, because it's this, effects, like this, I want to just group it. So go to group, so right click, and then select group. So it all just gets grouped. Right click, and then rasterize. Now what you can also do, if you want, you can save this and use obviously that design as a PNG file. Simply go to file and go down here to export. So file and export, and you can see then you've got this text and you can then just save it to say your desktop or maybe a folder or something of loads of different text. And I've gone for area, selection area. I only want that selection. So selection area, don't want the whole document. If I go for whole document, it's that. Don't want that my brush, I want that to be my brush, and go to export. And I can say brush two or whatever. Click save. And I can, of course, modify this. It's just a standard pixel layer, so you can create maybe distorted text. So filter, maybe add a bit of blur to it, or motion blur. Don't have to have it exactly like that. Maybe go for text and more, and click apply. You've got that as the brush stroke or use deform or other filters or maybe other color effects. So you could go for an emboss effect and so on. Create something like that as your brush design. So with this design, you've got that. You could, of course, maybe have created it with different. So if I just go back undo, let's just go undo again. Got this text, this rectangle. Don't have to have the entire rectangle. Maybe go for this. So text like that. Select another one. Select that. And it's time to go for a different color. Let's go for purple and so on. Again, very, very garish, I have to admit. But you can see you can create all kinds of different designs by different colors, different things combined. Now, again, exactly the same. Got all these. Select them all. All need to be selected. Right click, group. So all grouped. Right click again and rasterize. So it's all rasterized into one layer, which now can be used as a brush. So go here to the brushes panel. With the brushes panel, you've got here, you can see the brushes down here. So I've, a good thing to do, create a category. So you've got your text brushes or whatever brushes. Say you've got circular designs or anything, create a category for that. So I've got text, obviously probably better, text brush one, text brush two, etc. So with that, you can now Go to this right side and down here, new brush from selection. So new brush from selection. And now you can see you've got that. And again, move that. Again, layer, new layer. And again, go to the paintbrush tool. Paintbrush tool, you can then go here. And now you can see you've got your lovely text brush there. Obviously a bit oversized. So again, just double click. Double click it and then go to general. And you can change that. Just reduce it down. Change the spacing. Again, you might decide, you know what? I want it to be that way and not horizontally. 
And again, change the spacing a bit more, text and more, and dynamics. Do exact same as before, huge jitter, so you can just see with random, so you get reds, greens, blues, purples, etc. But you can also again go to cyclic. So cyclic, you can see then, click in a profile, and you can select different profiles, and you can change that and create all kinds of now. Unfortunately, because the size is quite big, let's just get a few more on there, spacing so you can actually see. Yeah, there's the change in the color. So if you go back to dynamics, you can see you can change that. Sometimes if you've got the size, obviously it's too great, it, you just can't see the cyclic change. And you can just drag that down. And again, you can modify this and that will change colors. I'm just gonna go with that. So with that, I can now apply, again, paintbrush tool, and you can see now, Got this lovely effect. Now you'll notice one thing. I can't see the shadow. So go back. Got there. Oh yeah, I didn't add a shadow. That's why you can't see a shadow. I was going to point out one thing. If you got here, you might want to create a design with that entire thing. Effects there. Go to our shadow, radius, and intensity click close now if you go here brushes right click there and then go down to new brush from selection and now see if i go over here and select a paintbrush tool select the right one you've got a shadow effect so you might want to do that you might want to add a shadow to your design of course a variety of different options in this let's just go back to this one that i just created one trouble is with this, if you haven't got the move tool selected, you've got the brush, it's always often hard to select. Then you suddenly find that it doesn't seem to show the cursor particularly well. So you've got this, and again, you can continue to modify the various settings here, situation and luminosity, as well as size. And you can do exact same as before. Exact same, click on the texture one, just there. And you can then go here and say add, and you've got brush to there and click open, and of course, you've got that. Add, brush to, another one, and so on. You can see, you can create a load of different options there for your text. And again, you can also add, of course, the same thing. So you want to, so you can sort of change the odds of whether it appears or not. You can always select brush to again. So you've got multiple of the same thing. Doesn't need to be different brushes. And then, of course, you've got random, cyclic, etc. And also, you've got textures and much, much more to discover, which can all be used with brushes. Also, of course, this design here can be used as a texture. So you could use that set texture, etc. Click close. And that is how to use text as a great source for brushes. And of course, lots of other things can be as well. But I do love using text as a great way of creating some interesting brushes. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.